So hi, hello and welcome again. Microbe Hunter here and uh, welcome to another live stream. Uh, this time it's uh, from my other channel. Usually I make a, or I made live streams in the past uh, from a separate uh, live streaming channel, channel that I created, but uh, I now decided uh, to kind of limit the number of microscopy channels that I have and I hope that you found uh, me here as well. Um, yes, uh, there has been a request uh, to uh, give a short introduction on how to improve uh, pictures taken with a microscope. And uh, for this reason, I want to show you some of the most important uh, features of a free program. Uh, many of you might already know the program. It's called uh, TubeView. It uh, comes along with uh, some microscope cameras. Uh, but if you don't uh, have a microscope camera, then you can download it for free as well. Um, and uh, of course, it's also possible to use this program even um, if uh, you do not use uh, a dedicated microscope camera. So if you use a mobile phone or a digital uh, a reflex camera, a DSLR or something like that, then of course you can also use the program to edit uh, the images. Yeah, um, so uh, what I'm going uh, to uh, do um, in, for the next hour or so, I'm going to um, show you a couple of, of uh, little tips and demonstrations on how you can improve uh, the contrast um, of uh, pictures that you've taken with a microscope. Uh, but I'm also going to show you how you can stitch and stack images together using this program. Um, both of these uh, stitching and stacking um, are quite important in microscopy. Stitching is uh, when you combine several overlapping images into a larger image. And stacking is, is when you combine one image of a different focus into one yeah, image that is fully in focus. Um, I will demonstrate this to you and the program Tube View is able uh, to do uh, both of these or all of these things, okay? Yeah, um, there is a, a comment already. I have a version called Tube Light. That is correct. Uh, this can also be downloaded, uh, but uh, Tube Light does not have all of the features. Uh, so what you can do, and I'm gonna show you where you can download uh, the uh, Tube View. Um, yeah, for free, it's, it's, um, it's uh, over here. Um, and um, you, it's basically tubetech.com. And uh, when you go to the downloads, uh, yeah, uh, downloads uh, uh, menu up here, okay? Um, then you can uh, download over here, um, yeah, for Windows. And uh, down here also for uh, yeah for for, uh, for for Mac and Windows oh that's over here that's Tube Light and and, and up here is is um, the is Tube View okay um, so it's the first uh, link up here and uh, Tube View contains a uh, it's basically almost the same program but it contains a few more features and uh, I'll be using that one yeah so but uh, maybe a Tube Light also contains uh, some of the features so you might uh, simply check. Uh, if uh, the program um, um, allows uh, for that or not, okay? Um, so I'll, I'm, I'm always uh, switching back and forth, uh, reading uh, reading the comments here. A really informative videos menu channel has helped me a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone, doesn't work uh, with all cameras. This is correct. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Windows only. Well, there is, um, it would be kind of interesting to see if, uh, um, yeah, Tube Light seems to be also existing for, for Mac OS. Okay, and there is also a Tube View for iOS. So if you have an iPad, for example, I did not try that yet. Um, however, it is also possible to run uh, Windows programs under uh, Mac OS. Okay, um, so there, I think you need some uh, to install a special program uh, for this. So um, just uh, very briefly, because it's correct, uh, there is a, a comment here, it doesn't work with all cameras. This is correct, but if you uh, do not have a camera, then you can still uh, store the pictures, save the pictures on your hard disk, and then you can open the pictures in the program and then continue processing them over there. Um, but uh, it's correct if you want to take pictures directly with a microscope camera directly into uh, the program, then uh, this is limited to certain cameras only, okay? Um, yeah, so Swift Imaging is very close in function and works on Mac. Okay, Swift Imaging, I don't know this program. So what I'll do first is, is I'll, um, I've already uh, opened the program over here. I'll give you a quick overview. Maybe some of you already know some of the features. Um, I'll just assume <laughs> that you don't. We're not going to talk about all of those. Um, but what is very important here is, is here in the corner, I have to see over here. Um, what you see over here is, is here you see the, the cameras uh, that you've co uh, connected, okay? And in my case, this is a 
camera, it's a five uh, yeah, uh, megapixel camera that I've connected. And uh, what I found out is, is that depending on the camera that you have, um, you might get different menus over here. And uh, there are different tabs down here. And what you have to have is, is you have to have the camera tab. Um, okay, select it. And uh, you can uh, choose the resolution and you can adjust uh, to all of the settings here. Um, I will not be talking too much about those here. Okay, um, except maybe the exposure and gain. So what you can do is, is right now the camera is connected. Uh, if you go to auto exposure, uh, then yeah, you can see that it will automatically expose it. And with this lever over here, you can increase and decrease the brightness. But what I always recommend is, is uh, especially when doing stitching and stacking, what I'll be showing you later, is that you adjust using auto exposure, you adjust it uh, to an appropriate setting and then you remove the check mark over here. Okay, you remove this check mark and then this basically means that uh, even if you go to a different place, okay, um, then um, it will not adjust the exposure. And if I increase now the brightness of the microscope, then it will go brighter. And if I decrease the brightness, it will go less bright, obviously. Right? Um, but if you have, keep it on auto exposure, then what's going to happen is, is that even if you increase the brightness, you see it's going to go brighter and then the, yeah, the program where the camera readjusts and I don't want that, okay? Uh, because um, otherwise there is a problem that different overlapping pictures, as I will show you later, uh, will have a different um, exposure, okay? So uh, this is basically pretty much the only thing that um, we need here with the camera setting. And then there's another one down here, and that is the so-called the undo tab. And that's pretty important because uh, when you want to undo an action, then you have to go in here and then you have a list, a history of all of the, um, of the changes that you made uh, to, the, uh, yeah, to the picture, okay? Um, so normally uh, you press Control Z to undo something. It doesn't work here, but rather it's a more um, it's got a more elaborate undo function where you can actually see a whole list of of, of changes that you made to the picture. Okay. So um, and then later on I'll be using a, a couple of uh, of menus uh, um, up here um, in, in, at the top. So what I will be doing right now is, is I will be closing now this camera um, uh, view over here and I'll be now importing a picture. Okay. So I right I want to close I right click the tab and I close it. Okay, what I'll do now is the following. I hope, yeah, um, you should now see a picture here and I already prepared something. And I just want to import now a, yeah, uh, a picture that I made. You see, it's just, I'm just regularly in the, you know, in my files and I just drag it over yeah, into the program and then, yeah, it's, 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 it's in here. Okay, yeah, so, and uh, you can see that, um, it's not very high in contrast. This is actually the um, blood smear, so the red blood cells on here, and and also trypanosoma. These are the the parasites that that cause sleeping sickness. It's a commercially prepared slide that uh, I got, uh, so I did not make this myself, of course. But I chose this slide because uh, it's very low in contrast, and. Uh, what I see quite often, uh, people sending me images and they say, can you please identify this? And it's sometimes very difficult to see or sometimes people posting um, pictures on social media and it's difficult to see. And I'm asking myself, well, why don't they just increase the contrast? I'm going to show you how this works. Mm -hmm. What you do is, is uh, you go all the way up here uh, to image and adjust. And we do an automatic adjustment first. And there are two um, yeah, choices here, auto contrast or auto levels. And the first thing that you would want to try is you try an auto contrast. And this is basically what's going to happen. And what it will do is, is the following. It will make the brightest part of the image white and the darkest part of the image black. Okay, uh, so if there is a, yeah, so that is basically, it works uh, quite well here. I'm going to show you some examples later where this is not going to work because there are a couple of black pixels already on there. Um, which kind of prevented from doing this automatic adjustment. Yeah. So, but this is uh, um, the first thing that I would try. And then if you want to save it, you click file um, and, then, and then save as, and you just save it normally, the picture. And now you can already see over here that um, on the side here, I've, I'm now I've got the undo tab over here. I can already see that uh, it has, uh, I opened the picture and I did an auto contrast. If I want to go back, yeah, um, then I basically make a check mark over here in open and uh, then the auto contrast is is not there anymore and I can basically go all the way back again yeah and if you if I want to delete this completely then I click here and I click on the X okay there's a little X up here yeah and then I've taken it uh, out completely yeah? so I go again over here image uh, adjust 
and and um, auto contrast. Okay, I'm gonna switch over again. Maybe there are a couple of questions again. Okay, um, yeah, thank you for the tip. Uh, I use Helicon Focus for stacking. Yes, I know Helicon Focus. Um, it's a very good program. I also used it. I'm also going to show you, uh, it's a commercial program though, uh, but I think you have a 30 day free uh, possibility. So Helicon Focus is a very popular program used for stacking images, uh, but it's also possible here and then you can see what works best for you, okay? Another uh, question, would you say if you use software to change an image, you might have unconscious bias to see what you want to see rather than what is actually there? This is a very good question and a very important question let me explain this to you because this is a, um, a question that when I started off many years ago with microscopy, um, I posted the same question to, um, uh, to, uh, to a form, to, to a web form. And uh, I basically um, said is, well, if you now um, do contrast adjustment or if you do some kind of improvement, are you not really, um, how shall I say this, faking it? Uh, to use a bad word, yeah? Um, it's not really the way it is. It's, it's kind of you're introducing, deliberately introducing bias. And, um, and I, I understand that there is a fine line sometimes. However, um, I think it depends entirely on the purpose. Um, a picture that is there to communicate. And if you do not see something properly, because uh, the microscope or the lighting system um, is not able to, or the camera system is not able to capture it properly, uh, then you can, I think, uh, it's okay <laughs> uh, to, to adjust it, okay? Uh, because you want to make your point, you want to communicate something, because um, when you say you're in kind of introducing a bias by adjusting the image, I can say, well, the microscope also already introduces a certain bias. There are lens errors uh, that are introduced, there is a filter settings, there is a condenser settings and so on. Um, so you might also transfer um, this bias away from the digital image processing towards the microscope, okay? Um, because you can say that even the microscope kind of interprets nature. Yeah. So, uh, so I get this point and I've been thinking about this my, myself, but I think what is really important is, is, is that um, you say, okay, um, we do not want to deceive anyone and um, a picture is also not nature, it's also on, only a representation of nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, so that's a little bit uh, the, the point here, um, but this is an issue that um, has been, yeah, how much are you allowed to change something? That's, uh, that's indeed, um, 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 yeah, an aspect that is uh, is a valid point that I have also been thinking about. Okay, so but let's go back here again um, a little bit. Um, okay, um, so I've in improved now the contrast, and I'm going to now show you a second possibility. So I'm going to undo this here again. Yeah, I'm and I'm going to show you a second possibility how you can adjust contrast the manual way, uh, which we'll be using later as well. Um, I go to image and I go to uh, adjust and I go to curves. Okay, where is this curve over here? And unfortunately, it does not show me a so-called histogram. Okay, normally when you have uh, things like this, there you have some kind of a histogram. But what you have over here is I've selected white over here, so it means all, all colors. And if I want to now in make the bright areas brighter, and then I move this over like this. Okay. And if I want to make the dark areas darker, I move it over like this. Okay. And if I change, I can change the mid-tones by raising it here as well. So what I can do is, is like, that's too dark, obviously. Um, I can play around with this as well, okay? Um, this is actually much nicer with a histogram. And there are, uh, of course, image editing programs that uh, have histograms. Um, you can display in this program a histogram, but it, it does not allow you to edit anything. But this is basically a manual way of controlling it if the automatic adjustment does not produce the proper results or desired results. I'm going to show you later an, an, an example of this, okay? Yeah. And, I, and then I can click apply, yeah? but I'm going to go cancel. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I might try to show it to you right away because we're just talking about this. I hope that I um, stitched it together. Yeah, here is a stitched image. I'm going to show you how to stitch this, okay? So I'm going to pull it over, okay? And here is the image. It's a little bit uh, too large. Uh, so I'm going to fit the window, fit it to the window. Okay. Um, yeah. And I would li now like, and you see the flea itself is kind of dark. Okay. Um, 
So I want to brighten it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to try this um, automatic uh, color adjustment. So adjustment like before, auto contrast. And well, actually, I didn't I didn't see a big difference here. OK, why is that? OK, and I'm going to tell you why with the auto contrast it does not did not give me yeah see over here on the on the side here two times auto contrast yeah and the reason is the following because the brightest part of the image down here is already white and the darkest part the eye of the flea is already black so we already have maximum contrast in the image but now i'm going to say but actually honestly yeah it's got the maximum contrast but still it's too dark because the main part, the flea over here is still too dark, okay? And in this case, I have to go manual because the, the program of course does not know that actually it should adjust the contrast only based on the subject, on the specimen and not based on the background here. How does the program know? And for this reason, I have to go back, I go to image, I go to adjust and I go to levels, not to curves. And now I can adjust the, the, the central part Okay, and you can see that this brightens up the image. Yeah, it looks a little bit washed out now, but at least I can now see more details um, of the flea. And if I want to make the dark parts still darker, then I pull in the curve over here. Yeah, if you do it too much, then it doesn't look good. Okay, then it looks kind of posterized. Yeah, um, but if you already have maximum contrast, then you can play around with, uh, oh, yeah by raising and lowering uh, the, the mid, mid, mid tones here. Yeah? And the straight line, this was the original. Okay? If you pull it down, it's gonna become darker, obviously. Okay? But um, I wanna increase it like this. Yeah? So my suggestion is, is try the automatic one first, um, and then if it does not uh, result in proper contrast, then go to the curves, and then you can click apply if you want to. Yeah? So um, I'm going to switch over again. If there are any more questions here, that's a great point. Thank you for your answer and cool. Okay, well, <laughs> glad that it uh, helped, okay? So this is, um, I would say, the one of the most um, common and um, um, yeah, um, image adjustments that I do. And the reason why um, this is so useful is this because if you have a high contrast and the image subjectively will appear more sharper because you have uh, bright and dark areas, yeah? I'm uh, using Q Capture Pro 7 software, but the frame FPS weight is lower than one. So how can I overcome this? Okay, the FPS weight is the frames per second. Okay, and I need I can explain this to you. This is a um, I'm going to demonstrate this using this program, and so maybe you also have uh, yeah are able to overcome this a little bit. Number one. Um, Generally, those microscope cameras, I'm gonna switch over now to the desk view so that you see one of those microscope cameras because these, they have a general problem, okay? Those, those guys here, okay? That's just like the older model, three megapixels, doesn't matter, it's USB 2.0. And uh, yeah, there is an, a reduction optics and it's correct, connected directly to uh, the computer. The problem is, is that the USB 2.0 is generally quite slow, okay? So um, you only get a, a relatively uh, smooth uh, video or smooth picture if um, either the resolution is low, so you have to go down with the resolution or you need a faster connection, USB 3. These are expensive, those cameras, okay? Um, however, um, there are some, some other adjustments that you can do to increase the frames per second, okay? And um, for to do that, um, you have to see if your program allows this to do. What you have to do is, is you have to make sure that the, um, uh, you go when you go manual exposure, you reduce the exposure time. Okay, you, um, I have to go over here. Obviously, um, I have to of course choose the camera because I didn't do the camera yet. Okay, okay. So here is the here is the camera, and um, not all, yeah, and not all the exposure. But if you go down with the exposure time, then the, um, you see it's so short that it becomes black, and then you can go up with the gain. Of course, it's now a little bit too, yeah? Um, and um, so I've got now an exposure time of 3.6 milliseconds here. Um, and of course, if you have an exposure time, which is, let's say, one second, um, yeah, because uh, you went all the way up to, I don't know, now 2,000 2, milliseconds is two seconds, okay? If you've got an exposure time of, let's say, one second over here, yeah, um, then, um, yeah, of course, it's going to uh, then... Uh, um, you know, send a picture every second. Yeah, so this is a um, this is a, a um, an issue. Okay, and uh, 
Yeah, and see, and now my camera gave out. <laughs> okay, that's kind of interesting as well. Yeah? So I'm gonna close this again, and I'm gonna start it again, and yeah, here we go, and I don't see the camera. It's kind of interesting. Okay, um, for whatever reason, my camera died on me. Okay, that's also some kind of a nice, uh, uh, yeah. See, it's completely black, even though, uh, what I might, what, um, I'm gonna close this. Uh, what I can do in this case, if this happens, this happens every now and then, I don't know why. Um, sometimes unplugging and plugging it in again helps uh, and because this kind of resets the USB. But luckily I prepared for this. That's why I prepared many of the pictures. So I'm gonna unplug this. I'm gonna plug it in again and hope that this is now going to work. See, that's interesting. It really, um, huh. Ha, device was pulled out. Yeah, I know that. All the exposure, funny. Okay, um, but it doesn't matter because I prepared the pictures um, and yeah, maybe the USB port is gonna come back after some time um, or I can try to close the program. See, it's, it's all black and that's interesting. And the, the cam, the, there is a light. Uh, no, strange, strange, strange. Okay. Um, yeah, these are the demonstration. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, screen is not vi visible. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Sorry about this. Yeah, this was the, the problem was, uh, it was actually uh, this one over here. Just a second. I need to go to the screen. Yeah. So this was basically, a, ah, the camera came back. Ah, good. Ta -da. It took some time and uh, now it came back. I hope that it works. Yes, it works. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to tell you over here uh, because there was the question about the uh, the frame rate. So I'm going to go away from the uh, yeah thing here. And um, yeah, you have to go down with the exposure time. And if the exposure time is too high, then of course uh, this uh, lowers the frame rate. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so I, um, uh, yeah, sorry about uh, not being able to see the screen, but you did not miss anything because <laughs> the camera just uh, froze on me. So uh, what I would like uh, to, uh, yeah, to get the full uh, 30 frames per second, your shutter speed needs to be above 30. Raise um, the ASA to get your speed up at the ASA, or um, in this case, it would be the gain. Yes. Um, however, then you still have the limit um, of the speed um, of uh, the camera. And if this speed still is not enough, then I suggest that you go up here and do you see the live over here? Then you go down with the resolution over here, okay? Uh, because then it needs to send uh, less uh, uh, yeah, data over the USB cable um, and then you also get a higher frame rate, yeah? So by, by the way, uh, I don't know if you're able to see this down here. Look. Uh, all the way down here, there is this information um, thing and it says frame rate 29. Yeah, So I've got now a frame rate of 29 and let's see if I go all the way up, the frame rate down here uh, drops to 6.8. So the, the information bar in the very bottom actually tells me, yeah, um, the, the speed. Yeah? So I, don't know, I just go. Go to this here. So uh, what I would like to show you uh, now is um, in, in, is uh, the following: is is um, I want to now show you um, how to do a little bit of, of stitching and, and and stacking. Okay. Um, so first, I'm going to show this to you with uh, the prepared images uh, that I've got, and then I'm going to show you um, a faster way of doing this with a camera if you have a, a microscope camera connected. Okay, so um, this means I go back to the software over here. I close, the, yeah, I, don't, I can close it if I want to, but I don't. So what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm simply going to import a few pictures, okay? And uh, I'm going to show you now a, um, a basically a stitching uh, together. And what I have over here is, is I've got four pictures. I have to import them, okay? I gotta get them in here. You see them in the tabs over here. And that is this uh, flea that I had just showed you before. But the problem is, is that it, with this objective, I was not able to get the complete flea um, imaged. 
Yeah, so you see that over here, part of the flea is missing down here um, on the bottom, okay? And, and some of the legs are missing over here as well. And I was not able to fit it in. So what I've done is I've created um, several overlapping images and you had the overlap has to be generous, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to yeah, show you how, you how the program is able to combine those four images into one image. What you do is the following, you go over here to process, stitch and it will show you now the images that I have not the camera one it recognize not it's not possible the camera I click add all I've got all four of them over here and you know what I'm gonna do I could click next and do some additional settings over here yeah just make sure that the projection type is plain Okay, that's important. Um, this basically means that, uh, yeah, uh, in, um, yeah, you're just horizontally shifting the pictures. Okay, and then you just click finish. And let's see what the program does. Okay, so it processes those four images. Okay, and um, yeah, you've got one complete image. And you see over here um, in the edge here, this black uh, edges is because this is where it did not take a picture. Yeah, so I have to kind of remove this later on. And this was a, yeah, uh, basically that's a very easy way how you can in, uh, increase the field of a view. So for example, if your microscope camera is only able to capture a very small part in the middle, um, if you make those overlapping images, then you can yeah, immediately create a much larger image. Um, yeah, and, and I think that's a, that's a, a very, very useful feature yeah? because uh, then you simply get much better. Yeah? Of course, I could have taken the pay, uh, this uh, flea also with a low magnification. Yeah? But if I need the resolution, if I want to have all of the details and maybe I want to have, make a larger print or something, yeah, then um, this stitching is, is quite useful. I'm going to show you now one where, where it didn't work. Okay, same flea. So look, I'm, I'm going to remove, uh, close all, but yeah. uh, no, I do not want to save changes. I also want to close this here. I'm going to import uh, now the other flea. I'm going to show you this over here and see they're all pretty dark the images okay I think this was the one where, where it didn't uh, quite work properly um, you see that there are more pictures over here okay so let's have a look here uh, process stitch add all and let's click finish because um, what I've done is I've changed the focus between uh, some of the overlapping images. That's a bad thing. And sometimes there was not enough overlap. Yeah, And uh, it was not able to combine all of the pictures. So you see that over here, the bottom part of the flea is missing. Yeah, So it was not able to stitch all of them. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, um, yeah, um, if this happens, then this is a sign that uh, essentially there is a problem. And I was able to find out where the problem is was actually that there was uh, too little, or was it over here somewhere? Yeah, over here with, the, with this, this leg here. Yeah, um, there was not enough overlap and therefore it could not connect it. And uh, actually this leg is now in focus, but the next picture had a different focus. So the, the yeah, it didn't properly overlap and it uh, couldn't, uh, um, yeah, couldn't combine it. Yeah, but um, if you know that, then uh, you simply take uh, those pictures again, um, and uh, you can then basically, uh, yeah, add those pictures where it didn't work. Yeah? Close all but this. Uh, save changes. No. So this is basically the, um, yeah, uh, the other uh, suggestion that I wanted uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to give you. Yeah. Do the images all have to be taken in the same orientation? I mean, what if one image is rotated with respect to the others? So uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, they have to be all taken in the same uh, uh, in the same um, way. For uh, for stacking, there can be a rotation. I'm going to show you later. Okay, uh, but this has to be horizontally moved. So um, essentially, if you have a mechanical stage X Y stage then this is, uh, yeah, uh, of course, uh, not a problem. And um, sometimes the cameras, uh, i just show you over here again, the desk, okay? If you have a, a, the camera over here, when it is in the microscope, then of course, uh, yeah, it, it's not, yeah, it can also be rotated. So what I sometimes, or what I have done in the past, um, is I put actually some 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 sticky tape um, around it, okay, so that uh, I was not able to accidentally, you know, because there's a cable going down and you bump into the cable and then it, it rotates, you know. Um, so sometimes uh, there is some of those cameras also have a rubber band over here, so that um, yeah it doesn't rotate so easily. That's why there is this little thing here, 
uh, so that you can put a rubber band here and some yeah and then it's uh, basically a little bit more snug and then it doesn't accidentally rotate but rotation is pretty important yeah so um i will go back again over here so here we are again so uh nope i have to go to windows here we go okay so uh, what I would like to show you now is another um, uh, interesting feature, and that is the stacking. Um, okay, uh, Helicon Focus has already been mentioned before, which is a commercial program which I've used. I like it a lot. But um, if you just uh, want to try out, try it out, and not pay anything, then you can try it with this program over here. And I'm going to now open uh, over here live. Uh, where is this Wasp? Okay, what I've done some time ago, I've taken with my stereo microscope pictures um, of a wasp, okay? And I'm gonna simply import all of them. I don't even know how, how many are there, 73 of them. Okay, look look at this at, at the, on the top, yeah? It's opening all of them. That's a little bit, I would say a little bit, maybe a disadvantage of this program that you have to open them, yeah? And uh, look at this here and you see that, uh, yeah? It's uh, yeah not uh, in focus, but as you click to the, through the different images, different parts starts to be starts to go in focus. But maybe you'll notice something else. Just uh, look at this. If I click between the first and the last image here, do you actually notice that there is also a horizontal shift? It's not only the focus changes slightly, but also the, there's a uh, horizontal shift. Okay, wh why is that? Okay, that's a really important thing. Uh, I need to explain this a little bit. Um, the horizontal shift uh, is there because I've taken this with a stereo microscope. And a stereo microscope has two objectives, one on the left and one of, on, on the right, one for each eye. However, the picture is taken only through one objective. And now when you focus and lower it, uh, because uh, the objective is off the axis, uh, therefore there is also a horizontal shift. And that's important uh, because we have to click a check mark later on. Okay, um, so don't be surprised if you, if you take pictures using a stereo microscope that there's a horizontal shift. Later on, I'm going to show you, uh, provided <laughs> my camera works again, um, how uh, to take uh, how to do stacking using a, a compound microscope. Okay, so let's do the stacking. Um, you see um, that over here there is a yeah. If I go all the way to the beginning here. You see the different parts are now start to go into focus, okay? Yeah, but I want to have an image where the whole wasp is in focus. Okay, so what I do is the following. I go again to process, EDF, enhanced depth of field, it's called EDF. You click it. Um, I add all of them. Okay, all of the 73 images, I have to click next. I just take the default values, okay, the default values. And over here, I have to do the following. I have to click shift and scale. Why is the, you, you see, there was a question about rotate. That would be the third one here, okay? But I didn't have any rotation here. Why scale? The thing is the following, when you uh, focus, uh, with a stereo microscope and you focus down then because it's closer the specimen is closer then some parts will also become larger okay so you see there is this horizontal shift because of the off axis and then uh, there's also a slight change in size as well as you focus because the further down you go the larger it becomes okay and that's why there's a shift in scale and i click finish and i let the program run okay I always kind of hope that it's not going to crash and that everything works fine. I mean, of course, I tried this out before. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to demonstrate something where uh, I know it's not going to work. <laughs> and uh, then it creates a new image, which is all in focus. I like it. Uh, notice here on the side, it's a little bit strange, blurry. This is because of the horizontal shift. Yeah, so you have to simply edit this away. Yeah, that, that's bad. By the way, that's a needle, an entomological needle that I used to kind of uh, yeah, fix the wasp. But it was already dead. <laughs> yeah. So you see, um, that that's now an image that were, which is completely in focus. And now I can take it, um, yeah, I can now, if I want to, I can now go uh, image, adjust, and I go to this um, automatic contrast. There is not a big difference. Maybe it already did an automatic contrast. 
image adjust uh, curves and then I can I don't know yeah I can play around with uh, yeah with it yet further okay yeah, and 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 do whatever I want yeah and then I can of course file uh, file and save obviously yeah um, so um, yeah that that's that's a possibility uh, maybe Helicon Focus knows has more options here uh, but uh, I, I, I would simply try it out yeah um, I'm gonna show you now also how this is useful even if you do not have a stereo microscope because maybe most of you don't have a stereo microscope okay and uh, so I'm gonna show you an example here okay uh, I do this with uh, astrophotography yes 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 horizontal shift can be from your head not adjusted and leveled with the stage it's also possible yep yeah. So there can be a variety of reasons for this. Yeah. So, but uh, in any case, in my case, it's uh, because of, of this off-axis uh, yeah, um, objective. Yeah. Um, that's some sophisticated image processing software. As a matter of fact, um, if you use dedicated software like Helicon Focus, and there are some other, you, it allows you to even fine-tune even more things. However, concerning the stitching part, I will be honest with you, I've had problems finding. Uh, other panorama software. Most panorama software that you can uh, is commercially available assumes that your camera is standing on a tripod and that you're kind of rotating the camera. Okay. So, um, but what we need here for this type of stitching is where you have a plane or horizontal movement. Now, I used to also make videos, uh, instructional videos, um, and I used to recom recommend the program MS Ice, Microsoft Image Composite Editor. Unfortunately, which also does very good stitching, which also allows for planar stitching, but unfortunately it's not maintained anymore and you have to kind of search online where you can still download it from somewhere, okay? But uh, so if you want to try MSIs, Microsoft Image Composite Editor, it's also a recommended software, okay? So um, I'm going to show you now the following. I look at the time, okay, uh, yeah, still have a little bit of time. I would like to show you now um, um, something where I'm catching some yeah, images uh, using the microscope and uh, a compound microscope and where you can also do some 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 stacking okay uh, only the main window of the program was shared menus and dialogues did not appear okay interesting oh maybe because it share, shared only the screen and only the windows and not the screen okay you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna repeat the whole process because it was so fast. Thank you for for reminding me. Okay, there has been the message that some of the only the main window was shared, but not what I've done. So what I will do is I'll simply because it goes so quickly, um, I will simply close everything, and I will show this to you again. Okay. So what I have done is the following: I have import. I've uh, dragged all of the pictures in in here. Yeah, it's it's always good if you give me feedback. Uh, unfortunately, I or fortunately, I do know why you did not see all of the dialog boxes because uh, I was only sharing the window and not the full screen. Okay, so in this case, what you do is is you go to Process, EDF, Electronic uh, Enhanced Depth of Field. Let me check. I think yeah, now you're able to see the dialog boxes. Okay, so here you have all of the yeah all of the images add all okay I just see that it's not sorted that's an interesting thing it's not sorted in, in in the proper order I wonder if this makes a difference okay next 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 shift and scale and finish and let's see um, yeah how this works because many uh, image software programs, they need to have the images uh, um, uh, in a in a proper um, yeah in a proper order. But I mean, the file names are numbered appropriately, so maybe this uh, program is able to recognize this. Yep, it worked a little bit. Do you see there is there are some strange okay yeah okay maybe maybe that was the reason you see over here. There's some strange artifacts now, okay. And I think. Uh, the reason is, is yeah, there's a shift here. Maybe because I did not uh, put the images uh, in the correct sequence now, yeah, and before it was close all but this. Okay, so um, do you want to save changes? Nope. Okay, and I'm gonna take this one as away. Close. Okay. So I hope that this was uh, yeah okay. Yeah. So I hope that you were able to see this now. Uh, but I, I, now I really want to know 
one, two, three. Look, this is all sorted. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it in again. Yeah, and now it is actually, let's see if this is now in order like before. So I go again, process, EDF, add all. Yep, now it seems to be in order. Next, next. Defaults, shift and scale, finish. Let's try it again. Did I just say extended depth of field? Of course not. Extended depth of focus. Depth of, yeah, well, depth of field is the same thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now it works. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you number your pictures. Okay. So um, next thing, I just wanted to show you the um, thing concerning um, how, uh, because again, most of you don't have, uh, I guess, a uh, stereo microscope. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you this can also be quite useful for compound microscopes. Let's see if the, yes, here, here we go. Okay. So what I've got over here, this is um, again, a commercially prepared slide. Let's go down a little bit with the, yeah, yeah, uh, it's a, uh, so this is a mite, a, a mite, a, um, a varroa mite, which attacks bees, okay? Um, it's a commercially prepared slide and I've chosen this one over here because, um, yeah, it's a whole mount. So this means it's fairly thick. And this means if you go up with a magnification like this here, let's go up a little bit also with the brightness. And when you focus, okay, um, you see the different parts come in and out of focus. And if you go up with the magnification yet further, you have to go up with the brightness, of course, as well. Okay, maybe even with the exposure time. Okay, then yeah, you see the frame rate goes all the way down. Yeah, then even more of a problem. Okay, so um, let's try the following. Okay, I need to go down with the exposure time again, and the brightness. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, what I would like to do is, is I would like to maybe maybe find a place where it's uh, more visible. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me demonstrate this to you a little bit. I'm going to point this uh, here. Um, let's see. Are you able to see this? Yes. Okay. My head might be a little bit in the way. So maybe I'll move out over here. Yeah. Um, over here, you see that some parts are a little bit blurry over here. Also over here, some of those here are a little bit blurry. Okay. Over here, uh, those here are again a little bit more in focus. Yeah. So um, it would be kind of nice. Uh, just watch this part here as a focus. Yeah. Yeah. See, now this part is much better. It's in focus. Okay. But now other parts like up here are out of focus. So it would be kind of cool if I could get this whole thing processed in such a way that everything is in focus. Yeah. It's just a demonstration now, okay? And so what I uh, what I usually do is the following: is um, yeah, um, I will um, take a picture, um, yeah, like this. Then I turn the fine focus. I take a picture. I take a picture. Take a picture. Take a picture. Yeah, every time. But because every time I have to click snap, yeah, okay, over here to take a picture, and this is a, a lot of work. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tell the camera that it should take automatic pictures. So I click over here, uh, start time lapse auto capture. And what I do now is I define over here a target directory where it should save the pictures. Over here, um, yeah, the name format. And I'm just gonna change to, to sequence, so basically numbers. I wanna save it as a JPEG, okay. Uh, it should start with one and um, it should take a picture every down here every two seconds. Okay. And it should store it in this directory over here. Yeah. And, and when I click OK, it will start doing that. And um, to show you that it does this, um, I will go into this directory. Capture, capture one. Uh, yeah, here, capture. Capture one, so basically, ah, I already have some pictures over here from before. So I'm going to delete those, okay? And when I click OK, you should actually see that um, it will store the images in here every two seconds. So let, let's give it a try. 
Okay, but let, yeah, I click OK. And I go over here again. See, the first one is already here. The second one is here. And the third one is uh, going to, uh, yeah, is here. Okay. And what I do now is, is um, watch down here in the corner, if you're able to see this, it will tell you how many it has already captured. And after every time when it has captured something, I will, yeah, turn the focus a little bit. 10, 11, 12, focus, 13. I've been turning it a little bit too, too much. Okay. But let's, yeah. Um, and then I click, uh, yeah, capture, stop capture. Okay, and then when I go in here, I've then got the pictures. Okay, um, I've got then the pictures of different depth, uh, yeah, with different focus. I've been doing this very sloppy right now. Okay, um, but um, yeah, let, let's, uh, yeah, let, let's try it again. Yeah, well, let's try, let's try, let's try it. Who cares? Let's try to stack those. Let's give it just simply a try. I import them over again. Um, and I go to process, enhance depth of focus, add all. They're all numbered. And let's click next, 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 finish. And let's hope that this kind of works better. Yeah, not really. I, I forgot. I wanted to I focused a little bit too quickly. So there's it's still blurry over here. Uh, but I tried this before and yeah, um, it put everything nicely into focus. Yeah, but I've been turning this a little bit too fast. Maybe two seconds is a little bit uh, uh, yeah, too fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, so is there uh, some more comments? Okay. Yeah, somebody commented. Nice, I didn't know that you started doing live shows. Yep. <laughs> it saves me time doing video editing. <laughs> so this is basically... Yeah, again, close all, but this one over here, no, close. And what I will do now is, is I will try to change the, yeah, I will turn counterclockwise. I will set the starting point and it will now maybe take a picture. Let's say, um, capture, image capture, no, start time I have to do. I will do this, let's say, uh, every three seconds. And I will here start. Okay. Did it do that? Did it start? Did it start capturing now? Yes, it continues. Okay, but I forgot to delete the previous ones. So I'm going to start uh, using from uh, 47. Okay. So, and then I turn it up briefly. Now, interestingly, it does not show me now uh, how many pictures it has taken. And as a matter of fact, I tell you why, because my camera died on me again. Isn't this nice? Okay. So that's a little bit, uh, yeah, I, I stop the whole thing. I close this here. No, or maybe it didn't die on me. Maybe it is because it didn't properly display it. Okay. Uh, that's uh, the thing with live streams that you never know <laughs> if there's an issue or not. Um, I'm going to delete all of the images again. Stop. Control A. And uh, let's go again, capture and start time lapse three seconds. And let's click OK. Ah, yeah, now over here, I see that, uh, yeah, you just check here, yeah, every three seconds. Up, oh, now I shifted it, unfortunately. So I will um, delete the first two images. Okay, I'm turning now very slightly. So this is image eight, image nine, image 10, image 11, image 12, yep, image 13, image 14, 15, 16, 17. See now everything becomes blurry. I think we can call it finished, okay? Uh, I stop the process, okay? I go in here and uh, yeah, um, 
I think the first, it continues, uh, yeah, to do that. So I think the first three pictures, uh, I think, uh, were bad. I'm going to delete those. And I'm just going to use those here. I'm going to import them again. I go over here into process, enhance depth of focus, add all, next, 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 finish. And let's hope that this works better. Yup. Okay. Now you see, I think that's what I wanted to demonstrate to you. Now you see that everything is in focus. Okay. Um, yeah. You have to uh, fine tune the parameters a little bit. Otherwise you start introducing artifacts, but this is now a picture which contains all parts. Um, yeah. In focus. Yeah. The ones over here, the bristles over here, and also the part over here was blurry before four. Yeah. So I'm just uh, showing this to you that this, uh, Focus stacking is not only useful um, for uh, for insects, for example, that uh, under the stereo microscope, but you can also use this uh, with compound microscopes as, um, as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is uh, simply something that I was kind of uh, yeah. Um, yeah, some comments here. You missed the image stitching. Yes. <laughs> well, um, all, the video will be saved anyway. Um, so if you joined in late, then um, essentially you can um, yeah watch the video from the beginning and uh, then I basically show you um, everything from the beginning. So the video is going to be saved uh, in this channel. Okay. Um, yeah. In, in case you're you're new here, um, I did make uh, uh, live streams already for a few weeks every week, but it was in a different channel. But uh, because uh, yeah, there were I was spread all over the place with too many different YouTube channels, I decided to consolidate this a little bit, and I will continue to do live streams probably around once a week as I planned um, on this channel here, usually um, on Saturday. Okay. So um, is there anything else I wanted to say? Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically you can do something similar. Yeah, that's the last thing I wanted to show you. Uh, let's uh, remove everything here again. Close all. Uh, no. And let's uh, reclose this here as well. We go back to the camera. Um, especially if you have, uh, let's, let's put this again into focus. I mean, in this case, it's not such a big uh, deal because um, it's not, um, yeah. Yeah, I just show, show, show you something. Let's go up. Uh, with over here. And let's say that I want to stitch across like this, okay? Um, what I can do is just like be before, I can click snap. So I've taken a picture and I go right back again to the camera view. I shift it over, it's an overlap. Yeah, I snap it again, take another picture. I go back to the camera and I take yeah a third picture, okay, snap. And then I can stitch those three together, or I can do this automatically. I'm going to show this uh, to you as well. Um, you go again to process stitch. I want to yeah do all of these and click finish. And then I hope that uh, the overlap was good enough. And then you see yeah um, it works like this. You see those uh, steps over here. This is because my camera was not mounted straight. So every time when I moved horizontally, the camera shifted. Yeah. So I have to align, uh, straighten out the camera. But what I had to do now is, is I had to manually click every time I had to manually click, uh, click uh, snap, okay, to, t to take a picture. Um, and uh, this can be a little bit annoying if, um, yeah, or time consuming if you've uh, got a lot, let's say hundreds of pictures to stitch. And in this case, I also recommend that you um, uh, do this automatic capture over here. Um, and then instead of changing the focus, you just basically every time, every, I don't know, three, four seconds, you just change the position a little bit. Okay. So um, I tried doing this with very, uh, with very large uh, images as well, stitching. And uh, sometimes um, this can result in very long calculation times and sometimes it's not able to match it, especially if there is not a lot of image content, I mean, lots of background and so on. So what I've sometimes found useful is, is uh, to stitch them together in rows, okay? So that you basically stitch, I don't know, five, six images together in a row, yeah? Um, and then you have your overlapping rows and then you try to uh, yeah, stitch those together again as a second step, yeah? Okay, there's some more comments. I have uh, given this a try. Normally only I do videos, but I reckon some nice images are possible after seeing this. Yep. Uh, Photomatics Pro is a good stitcher too. I don't know it, um, but that's uh, also thank you for the com uh, comment. I might also try this uh, try this out. There is uh, yeah uh, 
there are several uh, stitching programs as I mentioned but you have to make one uh, you or choose one that um, where you're able to stitch images together that are flat planar not with a rotating camera um, because some stitching programs assume that you have a rotating camera because you want to make a panorama and some stitching programs especially the cheaper ones they do not allow you two-dimensional stitching yeah um, so uh, there is a comment here um, with videos what I do is the following um, that's actually the content of a different video or live stream but um, sometimes um, you see when I make want to make a video I, I show this to you again when I want to make a video um, let's say of um, yeah of, of this might um, and then I use the XY stage it's kind of I'm not able to turn it very smoothly okay yeah and if I make a video like this, it kind of, yeah, it's not so smooth. So what I usually do is, is, is I stitch a large image together. I have a photograph then, an image. And then in the video editing program, um, I will actually pan okay, across. So um, I will allow, I will um, do, tell the video editing program to actually move across. Because this gives me a much, much smoother movement than me turning the, uh, turning the, the the mechanical stage yeah so this is also some uh, simply something that I'm, I'm doing occasionally that's why I'm stitching even for making videos uh, just let's say I wanted to show the might uh, uh, this one over here um, uh, from from top to bottom okay uh, of course I could capture video yeah me kind of moving moving the the, the, yeah, the specimen across okay yeah that, that's possible but uh, if I want to have a very smooth movement and uh, then I simply make a picture stitched image and uh, will define the starting and end point and the video editing program will actually make a very smooth pan um, across. Yeah? Um, also a, a little tip in case you, you wanna make videos, okay? Okay, I, I'm now a little bit uh, out of content right now. I just realized I've been now also live streaming now for 55 minutes. So the hour is almost uh, over. Um, I'm always very thankful for not only on, on the company. So I'm gonna leave it at that guys, um, folks uh, and um, I wish you uh, wish you all the best and uh, yeah see you around next time okay bye bye happy micro hunting